It is long past time to help New York's Hasidic children. It is an essential obligation of state government and foundational to life and liberty. New York requires children to go to school and to receive instruction in English and math and other basic skills that are necessary for participation in our democratic society. But New York has failed to fully enforce those laws. An education system that contains some of the finest schools in the nation also contains some that are profoundly struggling, whether public or private, religious or secular. This past week, new attention has fallen on how state and city officials have allowed tens of thousands of Hasidic children to attend schools that openly flout the state's requirements. Former students have testified that upon graduation, they were unable to read in English or even write their own names. A New York Times investigation into the state's Hasidic schools laid bare the extent of the crisis. About 50,000 boys are attending these private schools, operated by Hasidic communities in New York City and the lower Hudson Valley, where there is hardly any instruction in English and math, and even less in science and civics. In 2019, the Times found, more than 99% of male students at nearly a dozen Hasidic schools who took state standardized tests in reading and math failed, while about half of all students who took the same tests in the state passed them. Some children, too, have been subjected to physical abuse from poorly paid, unqualified teachers. Making this possible are federal, state and local tax dollars to the tune of more than $1 billion over the past four years alone, according to the investigation. I'm the third generation born and raised in New York City, Haim Fishman, who attended Yeshiva Kehalath Yaakov in Williamsburg in Brooklyn, told the Timus Eliza Shapiro and Brian M. Rosenthal, and still, when I was 15, I could barely speak English. A benchmark for any government is how rigorously it protects its most vulnerable, and New York is failing this test for most of the 50,000 boys who attend Hasidic schools. They are being denied education in a common language and the other essential skills that enable Americans to meet their responsibilities as citizens. The state is also misusing public resources by allowing money to flow to schools that are not even attempting to meet basic standards. Families have the right to decide where to send their children for education, and many choose religious schools. But state support for those institutions must be contingent on their compliance with state law. New York, a state where a relatively high proportion of schoolchildren attend private school, about 13%, has long turned a blind eye to the conduct of those schools, including the Hasidic schools. This month, the state's Board of Regents for the first time adopted a clear framework for certifying that private schools are complying with New York education law. Under this framework, local school districts are responsible for determining whether private schools within their jurisdiction are meeting the state's basic standards for education. Hasidic schools and other private institutions that are failing to meet that standard have 60 days to work with the local school district to develop and commit to a plan to bring the school into compliance. In New York, having any framework at all is an improvement. But the changes are inadequate. The new standards allow schools to continue to operate within state law if they show good faith efforts to improve, a vague measure that can allow failing schools to operate indefinitely. It is a loophole so large that it could render the changes meaningless. The state has also declined to include requirements for a minimum amount of instruction time in English or other subjects. And the state has failed to lay out any clear and meaningful consequences for schools that refuse to comply. The immediate crisis confronting the state is that dozens of Hasidic schools are operating in open defiance of state law, often barely offering classes in English. The state needs to establish a firm deadline for these schools to achieve compliance. Massachusetts offers a model. That state allows private schools to operate only when local school boards find that their level of instruction is at least equal to that of local public schools. The logic is simple, if a school doesn't provide an education equivalent to what a student would get at a local public school, then attending that institution doesn't count as going to school. 
Such laws do not interfere with the right of families to choose a private or parochial education. Rather, it ensures that the state fulfills its obligation to make sure that every child, whether educated at home, in public schools or in private schools, receives an education that meets basic standards. In the longer term, the state and local school districts also will need to strengthen their ability to monitor and enforce the education law at private schools. Governor Kathy Hochul and the state legislature can direct funding to local education departments in New York City and elsewhere in the state, allowing them to hire and train dedicated staff members to properly monitor and investigate private schools that are not in compliance with the state's education law. They can also direct funding to the state education department, where a shortage of staff has stymied reviews of Hasidic schools and made enforcement difficult. New York's biggest problem is not the rules, but the enforcers. Application of the new rules rests with local officials in New York City, Rockland County, and elsewhere who have long failed to hold Hasidic schools accountable.